I'm Stephen Bauman, and I want to welcome you to one of my podcasts slash Patreon events. A lot of you have been wondering a lot about temperature, and today is your lucky day. You're going to learn things about temperature that I have kept from my students for a while, because I figure if you're taking coaching, that you probably would like to get something more than just the coach, you know, what I have on YouTube. And, you know, for years I've been holding back, but I've got a new book out. The new book is everything that I kind of know. It's the Bauman Ultimate Field Guide to Plain Air Painting. And it is amazing. And all of these things are in there. And I figured, you know what? It's time to let you in on this secret. You can look for this on YouTube, but I guarantee if you watch this video all the way through, you're going to have an insight that you never had about temperature. And so sit back and relax, watch this entertaining conversation that I had on Patreon. And by the way, yeah, this is Patreon. For if you are not at a place where you want to do coaching, you can try some of the coaching and work with me. You know, that's my forte working with students. And I would invite you to go over to Patreon, give it a try, it's not that expensive. There's nothing like coaching though. If you really want to get somewhere with your coaching and get there quickly, I know I sound like a commercial, but these are just opportunities for you guys to learn and get better quickly. It's part of my mission to touch, move, and inspire millions of people. And you are part of my mission. So uh, participate in the Patreon if you if that's the level that you're at. Call me for coaching at 415-606-9074 or just purchase my book, which is coming out here very shortly. Stefan Bauman's Field Guide, Ultimate Field Guide, not just a field guide to planar painting. And this is a book, it's, it's like a textbook. It is not like an ego book. It is a textbook on learning how to paint outdoors. You will have a better understanding of understanding what it is that we actually see. So sit back, enjoy this ultimate gift that I'm giving you today on temperatures, how to see them, how they work, what they are. Again, it's just one of my 12 keys that I have that I feature on my book. There's so much more information. Stay on my YouTube station, subscribe to me because I guarantee you being part of this journey is amazing. So sit back and relax and enjoy. Hey, I, I have a question, Mr. Bowman. Yes. How are you? I'm good. Good. So I'm, I have a question about uh, colors and temperature, you know, and I always hear, you know, you say mm -hmm. uh, highlight should be cool and shadows should be warm. Um, but, you know, so are we talking about like relatively, like, let's say I see a shadow and it looks kind of, cool or bluish like are you saying i should use like because i have uh like two blues right kind of a warm blue and a cool blue i have two reds a warm and a cool uh two yellows a warm and a cool um so maybe if i see a shadow that's a little blue bluish you know are you saying i should use uh that warmer blue like i use cobalt for my warm and then a french ultramarine for my cool blue you know, so comparatively, yeah, maybe cobalt isn't, you know, warm compared to like cerulean, but, you know, compared to that deep, dark French ultramarine, you know, it is a, a bit warmer. Does that make sense? Does my question make sense? Oh, it's literally the question that is on everybody's mind who has never taken coaching from it. <laughs> It is it is the the golden key. It is the it is the reason why you are here. It's the it's the thing that separates me from everyone else. And so to answer your question, no. Most of you've forgotten. <laughs> most of you've forgotten the question already. The question was, is it relative? And I would say with a big fat no. No, it's not. It doesn't. It's not relative. It's not Einstein's theory of relativity. 
it's not a guesstimate or sort of thing. It is not maybe or maybe not. Let's get this clear right now. No. It has everything to do with the difference between light and shadow. So pretty much to break it down into really simple philosophy. In the beginning, there was nothing. And God came down and created a sphere and said it was good. He created earth. I don't necessarily believe this, but this is what is written and this is what we say. So then, and then when it was all dark and all warm, God said, let there be light. And all of a sudden, all relativity went away. Light became a power on its own. It's a separate entity. When you walk into a dark room and you flip the switch, everything that's there prior to the light turning on is dark and warm. Darkness has a neutral color. It has a go-to color. It's kind of a brownish ultramarine blue dark. Yeah, if I would if I could like, you know, like maybe that. See there before before life there was that. And then the light. So Light is made up of light rays, red, yellow, blue. But also you complement your colors. Without the three red, yellow, blue rays of light, there's nothing. But objects have color. You know, this black shirt, my background, this, this coffee cup. Um, I don't know what else I could pull up that's handy here. But... They have color, local color, the color of an object. And for the most part, those color of objects are also warm because they just are. And the, you know, the shadow has a default color of brown. See? That color there is brown. Light, when we assess light by itself and we have a crystal, and we shine light through it, we get a rainbow. So the action of light going through a crystal creates light, okay? That action of light isn't relative to anything that's there. It's a separate thing. And so when light comes and hits something, it brings forth red, yellow, blue rays, and when we look at a rainbow, it's kind of separated into red, yellow, and blue. <clears throat> but the blue that we actually see is a cyan or a cerulean blue. It's a cool blue. The red that we actually see is like a magenta or a thalo red rose or a permanent red rose. It's not a fire engine rose. It's not a Grumbacher red. It's not a it is not a cadmium red light or a cadmium red deep. It is actually a magenta. And the yellow that we see is actually more of a color of a lemon yellow. It's not a cadmium yellow medium or deep. It's not an orangey yellow. It's not a kind of relative cooler color to the other yellows. It is definitely a lemon yellow. It is a yellow that leans towards blue. And these three light rays that enter into your painting light up whatever's there. So when you look at my heads, right now I'm sitting in front of one of those silly little rings, right? Because they said if you're going to do podcasts, you got to have a ring in front of you. So I got a ring. If you look really closely, you'll see the circles. You see that? Okay. So I have options in that. I have a, a kind of a warmer color, kind of a yellowish color, and there's a bluish color I could flick into. So I could turn that blue. Either the yellow or the blue is never warm. It's always a cool color. And the color of the ring right now affects this right here, my forehead color right here. 
that color there is not the color of my skin. If I were that color there, if I were that color right there, you'd call the hospital and say, he's dying, he's got jaundice. That color there is the color of the ring. And I can adjust that. I don't know where my adjuster is, but I could turn that bluish too. But that is a cool blue, cool yellow. But the thing is, that has nothing to do with the local color. The local color is the color of my skin without that. Now, the shadow color that you see in here, you know, if I were a black person or an Asian person, the shadow color that you'd actually see here in the shadows, because I have a ring, I got light coming straight on. But that shadow color in here, that's a default color. That's the color of that. And that, my friend, is a brown blue cross between ultramarine blue, which is never cool, which you said it was. I have no idea why you got that idea. Well, French Ultram ultramarine, is it a little different, maybe? No, French ultramarine is a little red, but it's still <laughs> it's still friggin' warm. Cobalt blue is a warm blue. Okay. Always. Cobalt is warm? Yeah. Always. I tried so hard not to have cobalt blue be warm. I wanted it to be a cool color. I used it consistently for years teaching. Oh, yes. Well, cobalt blue is a cool color because it's blue, right? And they go, well, I have a warm blue and cool blue. I go, well, what's the difference? Both blues are blue. This is why you don't watch videos from people on YouTube who don't know. Because they don't understand this either. This concept is so easy. And yet it's so hard. You wonder why for 1400 years, we didn't understand perspective. The Romans got it. The Greeks got it. But it took another 1,400 years for the Renaissance artists to figure it out again. 1,400 years to figure out that if something's really close to you, it's twice as big as what's behind you. I mean, and temperature is the same thing. You could go on videos and videos and videos on temperature, and you have idiots go, I have a warm blue and a cool blue. I have a warm yellow and a cool yellow. And they don't tell you why or even what they are. They just tell you that because somebody else on a video who didn't know said the same thing. And they just repeat it. And people sit there and go, huh? And what's interesting is I teach these things in groups of people. And I will have a, a student in my class for five years sitting every week listening to a lecture like this. And they'll look up and they'll go, what do you mean a highlight is cool? After five years, every weekend, hearing me say that. Because you're not ready to learn that. It's so simple. And we base everything on that. But the thing is, the reality is, is that we learn what we learn when we're ready to learn it. And today, my friend, you're going to learn that. So... The highlight color is always the color of the light. This is here because the light is here. There's no relativity here. This color here is my highlight color. It's the light that comes in. It's not relative to any other yellow or anything. This is a cool yellow here. Then we have a transition color. So the shadow color here, that's the color, the default color. And whether I'm black, Asian, or whatever, that color is always going to be the same. And you can't make a muddy color. You could take all the colors in the world and mix them together and make a beautiful shadow color on any, any figure. And it's consistent. The, the space where we actually see colors in the transition. And when you read my book, we really go into the transition, the biggest part of painting. In fact, maybe I'll discuss that next week. Between the highlight and the shadow is where the magic happens. So in between the highlight and shadow, this area here, can you see that, everybody, that area right there? That's where my local color is. That is that. That is the area that you know that I'm a white European, uh, you know, descent, okay? I'm a white guy, a cracker, whatever you want to call me. I, that color exists right in here. If you're Asian, that's where you're going to find the Asian. If you're black, that's where you're going to find the black, right there, believe it or not. This color would appear on a black person. This area in here, the transition area, that is the color of your flesh. And guess what? You don't need a lot of that on a face. So you have that highlight color here, transition color here, 
and shadow color there. The shadow color is always a default color. It's always a dark brown. It's like the color that's behind me. Your highlight color is always the color of the lamp or the light or the sun. And that's a cool color. There's only seven cool colors. This is why you guys got to get my book. All this stuff is explained. When I wrote my book, I know 40 years of experience teaching students. I didn't have the internet for a lot of that time. I had to figure stuff out, looking at old masters paintings, standing in front of paintings for hours going, what is going on here? I had to go out into nature and figure this out. I would have students ask me, could you, could you, you know, do some painting on mine? And I would pick up the canvas and I would correct their painting. And they'd go, well, why did you use that color? Or why did you do that? And I would go, I don't know. It just feels right. Because I didn't have this one piece. And all of you who have had students, you say to your teacher, why did you do that? And they go, hmm, I don't know. It just felt like that. I saw people at demos at the plain air convention say that. And I'm like going, yeah, because you don't understand the beauty of temperature. So the color of a rainbow is opposite of the colors that are there, the local colors that are there. And there are seven cool colors. And at this point, I want to see a screen open up and say, what are those seven cool colors? I'm ready. I'm waiting. And I've given this to the, to the Patreon students before. Now, alizarin crimson is in there. I hate alizarin crimson. If you're using alizarin crimson, run, don't walk with your tube and toss it out the window. Alizarin crimson is an ugly stepsister to Thala red rose or magenta. You're wasting your time. She's a siren. She's a she's a she's not a pretty color. Nothing you can do with it makes it pretty. And, it's, and it occupies space for its beautiful stepsister, magenta, or thalo red rose, or permanent red rose. So those three colors are all exactly the same. Thalo red rose and permanent red rose are you know, different companies. Now, be leery. This is the example. So back in the day when we were younger, 40, 50 years ago, there were two dominant paint companies. Picture this. Grumbacher, German company, strong. And Windsor Newton, a little more feminine company, but still strong. Not like the Germans, but, you know, they did win the war. So both of them are like out there, a German company. One company, Grumbacher, decides that they're going to call that magenta Thalo Red Rose. And they actually put a patent on it. And then Windsor Newton comes and goes, oh, shit. They took that word. So we're going to call it permanent red rose. And therefore, the beginning of the history of the two thalo red roses began. And so a lot of these paint companies have the same colors across the board with different names. And you artists that are thinking, oh, if I just buy the right color, maybe I can paint like Stefan too. But it's not found in a tube because those three yellow, those three cool colors that come out of the sun, the red, the yellow, the blue, actually can create anything because it's those actions of those three colors that actually produce the, the color of the highlight and the transition color. The transition color is usually a variation of a warm and cool color and the color of the object that it that it wants to be. And then it goes in the shadow. Now I'm spending a lot of time on this, but I've been on Patreon for a year and I've had yet anybody actually ask me this question as directly as you have. So thank you. But I want you to realize this too. If you just doubt that for a moment, I know most of you have a printer in your office. And most of you have been surprised when you had to go buy ink for it because you can only print like six pages. And then all of a sudden you have to go buy ink and you go buy the ink 
and it's a hundred dollars for four colors red yellow blue and black and you go oh my god i paid that much for the printer it's crazy but then as you're popping them in you peel the little tabs off and on the tab it says magenta the other tab is cyan which is like australian blue and the yellow is a cool yellow like lemon yellow it's not an orangey yellow there's no red in it it's a yellow blue and then you have your black and you know that all those three colors make the most beautiful photographs that come out of the thing everything everything that you buy and print is a is a three color offset printer actually four color because the black goes on top of you know these print companies don't have all these paints that you have and yet they can produce more vibrant colors than anything you can possibly dream of by using the three complement the, the three primary colors as long as those three primary colors are cool and we could say that well you know in proper doses or mixtures the three cool colors can produce warm colors if you mix them right and so so they can produce anything so we could actually say the three primary colors are not just red yellow blue but as we look at them as the light creates them it's actually a cool red a cool yellow and a cool blue and that's where everything starts it took me 30 years of teaching to figure this out i sat with and she's her heart meter is going crazy while I'm giving this information out to a group of artists because nobody in the room knew this. It's, it's, you know, and this is why I felt compelled that I had to write a book because, you know, it's going to take another 10 or 15 years to somebody that like me sits and figures all this out. It's really kind of simple if you would get it down to the basics and there is no relative thing there are cool colors and there are warm colors you never see a warm color in a in a rainbow she turns to me and she says well what about an orange sunset and i said where the light is in an orange sunset is going to be made up of orange and she goes well orange is warm and i go not if it's made with two cool colors so if you use orange color that comes out of a tube, it's warm. If you make orange out of phthalo red rose and lemon yellow, it's a cool orange. And it will set back into a sunset beautiful. So this color conversation we're having is by far the most important conversation you can have. It Without this idea of what color truly is and i can sit here after 40 years working with thousands of students that if when you figure this out and you bring it into your paintings it's a game changer it is the key that opens everything it's the, the reason why i can coach and students who coach with me they get it and their paintings are gorgeous and they separate their colors and and realize that painting is not so complicated right sue she's sitting in the corner here right Sue, just shake your head we had this conversation <laughs> so but it is it is you never get muddy paintings if if you you know if you hear artists and they go well don't mix that because you get mud they're 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 fools we're in a closed room we can you know we know each other we're family but they're fools to think that that you can make a muddy color oh if you mix everything together it's going to get muddy you're going to ruin your painting it's like no that's not what muddy is a muddy painting is when your highlights are warm and your shadows are warm that's when a painting looks muddy if your painting starts to look muddy it's because your shadows are warm and your highlights are warm that's when it looks muddy if your painting looks chalky it's because your highlights are cool and your shadows are cool. If your painting looks chalky, it's because your highlights are cool, as they should be, and your shadows are cool, which they shouldn't be. Your shadows are always warm 
and your highlights are always cool. And what's ironic is that you've been painting that way for years and never knew it. I listened to <coughs> at a demo and sit there and go, well, you always have to remember when you're painting in the desert, the sun is warm. And so if you're going to put uh, highlights on the rocks, you have to be sure you put in cadmium orange to make them warm. And I'm like going, how much cadmium orange do you have to put into white to make it warm? Because the sheer act of putting white into cadmium orange makes starts making it cool. Why don't you just mix up a cool orange and slowly add a little bit of white for value? Yeah, so, and I mean, he's he is the rock star of planar painting. I mean, yeah, he can fill a room if he's going to give a demo. And I sat there, give it a demo after him. And I said, let's close the doors here. So the doors were closed. And I said, Matt, and Matt, there was 250 people in the room. And I said, whatever I say is between us, right? But let's just say this. Matt, maybe right. But let's just say maybe, maybe let's take another look. I didn't want to say he's wrong. But I said, his the way he paints it is right, but his understanding is is you know skewed. So let's let's just look at it a different way. It's nothing wrong, nothing. To, I'm not challenging him, but let's just say if the highlights were cool and the shadow were warm, let's talk about a conversation like that, and we created cooler highlights against warm shadows. You would get an incredible contrast, and you wouldn't have muddy colors. So usually people who don't understand temperature rely on values. And so you'll hear artists go, well, values are the most important thing when you're painting. Remember your values, young man. Remember your values. That's the most important thing about paintings. You get your values right, you can paint home free. Those artists have never experienced temperature. And every once in a while, I see a demo from artists that are like trying to put together schools. And, at, you know, taking a class from somebody, especially on, you know, on social media here, can be kind of, kind of taxing. You know, it's like you, you don't really get this kind of individual attention. You know, you, it's like, or just really basic stuff. But every once in a while, I send out a thing going, we're going to be looking at temperatures. And all of a sudden, you know, you listen to them and they'll they'll reassess their thing. And they go, wow, temperatures. That's an interesting conversation. And then I always send in a thing going, you master temperatures, your entire program will change worth of value. So thank you so much, Adrian. And any of you that hate this conversation and don't want me to rant like this, send your letters to Adrian here. You could do it through Patreon. He will be responsible. Don't send them to me. But this is a learning thing, and it's a free day, and you just got yourself a thousand dollars worth of a year of coaching for nothing. So thank you. I told you that was going to be a lot of fun. So yeah, temperatures is really kind of an important thing. It's like the thing that really will change your life. And I know we're a little tongue in cheek in the process of doing this, but that's how you learn. So if you want to get involved in conversations like this, just head over to the Patreon, look me up, Stefan Bauman. But if you want to take some coaching, which is really the only way that you can get anywhere quickly, I'm your guy. Give me a call, 415-606-9074. If you like YouTube videos, I've got over 300 of them. Go to YouTube, look me up. I have podcasts. Yes, podcasts. That a lot of this information is similar, and you could listen to my podcast as you're driving on your road. I've got a free book. I do have a new book coming out, which is amazing. It's Stefan Baum's Ultimate Field Guide, Plain Air Painting. It's really an awesome book. I've spent two years working on it with an author and she's was amazing in the process. But I have that. But if you want a free book, go over to my website. It says free book. Sign up for it. It's not the book that is the ultimate field guide, but it's worth getting. 
I've got blogs and noodles letters, but the main thing is, it's like, you know, don't be shy. Go to my website, www.stephenbauman.com and do something that's going to change the way you paint forever. I guarantee it. And if you want a workshop that will change the way you paint forever, look up workshops because I have them in Mount Shasta and in Las Vegas. Yes, we're going to Vegas, baby. And give me a call on that if you want more information. The information is on my website or just give me a call at 415-606-9074. But if you want to make a difference, try coaching. Don't be afraid. Don't worry that you're not good enough. A lot of my students wait and wait and wait and then they wish, wow, I would have been so much further ahead had I just given him a call. So call. And until then, keep watching my videos, keep watching my blogs, my podcasts, everything that I'm doing, because you will learn something from me if you like it or not. In the meanwhile, don't run around your studio with scissors in your hands. It's dangerous. And always remember to paint with passion. I'm Stefan Bauman, and thanks for watching.